Hi, I'm Bob. I'm someone's doctor. And because, statistically, most of you watching this are as dumb as my patients, I'm going to guess you do a lot of the same stuff. So as a favor to all your doctors, I'd like to point out a few things. Way, way too many of you are putting things in your butt that are not made to be inside butts. In medical shorthand, we call these cases insertions. Once upon a time, a man had the brilliant idea of soldering a surprisingly large dildo to a metal bar. I assume this was so he could grab onto it and, you know, um, plumb around while it was inserted. <sighs> it was a noble attempt, I guess, yeah. but for some reason the handle didn't work. Huh? He got the dildo stuck inside himself huh? and all his ingenuity and craftsmanship couldn't get it back out again. <sighs> he couldn't sit down to drive. Didn't want to call an ambulance and pay a thousand dollars like some sort of impaled Rockefeller. So he put on the baggiest pair of pants he owned and took a walk of shame all the way to the hospital. Once he was here, well, we have tools for this sort of situation. Huh? Terrible, unspeakable tools. <sighs> I think he actually found that part exciting though. So that story has at least half a happy ending. If you're watching this, you're probably not a doctor. There aren't all that many of us, and we understand that the rest of you have important things to deal with. To help you out, the good people who make medicine include instructions on all their products. But if you don't read those instructions, well, things can go wrong. One particular case comes to mind. A couple had been in earlier that day to get help for the wife's constipation. Their doctor gave her a box with two enemas. For those of you who are lucky enough to not know, an enema is a little bottle of fluid with an uncomfortably long spout. This poor, hopefully illiterate woman took one look at the spout and knew exactly what it was for. Drinking. But that's not why she came into the ER. No, she only saw us because she hadn't been able to force herself to drink the second bottle, and she wanted to make sure that just taking one was okay. I asked, did these come in a box? Uh -huh. And are there any instructions with pictures on the side of the box? So, uh, is it a problem she drank the enema? I called poison control. And because I'm a good human being, I didn't tell them the call took 20 minutes because the poison control office couldn't stop laughing. On the upside, the enema still worked. The woman just suffered horrible, Lovecraftian abdominal cramps. And that wasn't even a bad call. At least the lady had a legitimate issue. Please call poison control, even if your problem is hilarious. For every hour a doctor spends actually seeing patients, we've got to spend around two hours charting, documenting everything we did for insurance companies and the government. It's roughly as rewarding as making passionate love to a pile of sawdust. And when we actually do get to see patients, a lot of them are this guy. <laughs> Americans consume roughly 80% of the global opiate supply. I'm not exaggerating for comedic effect. We are taking all the drugs, and most of us don't need them. So a big part of my job is saying no to people with back pain. Now, it can be hard to tell when someone's lying about pain. Uh, my back. And back pain is a real nightmare. Please, doc, just some drugs. But I've heard way too many 40-year-old men say, I'm allergic to Motrin and Tylenol. I can only take Percocet. Once, I turned a patient down for painkillers on the grounds that not a damn thing was wrong with her. She started yelling to the whole ER that she and her kids were going to wind up sleeping on the street because I wouldn't hand her a prescription. It turns out she'd been selling her pills. She needed them for rent money. You can't get angry as a doctor. You've got to stay professional, move on to the next patient. And if you aren't careful, that can kind of break you. See, the most important thing you should know about your doctor is that he might be living a life of unspeakable despair. So, there's a particularly horrible brain tumor called a pontine glioma. It grows in the brainstem, the part of your brain that knows how to keep your body alive, and it tends to strike children. Initially, the child has minor symptoms, double vision, trouble swallowing, maybe some weakness. Then the tumor mercilessly and inexorably kills them. And there's not a goddamn thing I, or anyone else, can do about it. And after dealing with that, I have to go to my adult spine clinic and immediately deal with the guy with a nearly invisible disc herniation who's demanding narcotics and a disability statement. I just need some pills, guys. Just, just a couple, just a pill or two. And then I go home and chart for several hours until I get to sleep. Hi, can I have some pills, please? I just mm -hmm. have all these. You got some of that morphine? 
It would actually be great if the main side effect of all this frustration and stress was whimsical cartoon violence. Unfortunately, it's lots of suicide. Male physicians are three times as likely to kill themselves as the general population. Female physicians are four to five times as likely to commit suicide. Every year, the US loses the equivalent of one full medical school graduating class to suicide. All this as we're looking at a projected shortfall of 90,000 doctors by 2025. Only 3.9% of medical school students are depressed, but one year after they start their internship and actually work as a doctor, that number jumps to 25.7%. And you can all do a little bit to help with this crisis. Take better care of your butts, read the directions on your medicine, and don't go to the doctor when you want to get high. Hey everybody, thanks for watching that video. If you want to subscribe to our channel, click the big C in the middle, and to get notifications, hit the notification bell icon, and they'll send you notifications about that. Now, let's rock this joint!